Hello. How are you? Good to see you all. Welcome back. After some time of pause, as many of you know, we had like a few weeks ago, we had the translation course, the translation term. It was very, very interesting as usual. <laughs> so we are back. We still on our uh, road to the episode 100. This is episode 82. And yeah, very happy to see you all. Thank you for joining. Tonight here we have with us as panelists, Venerable Gielse. Hello, thank you for joining. We have also Berta Velasco from Mexico City. Thank you for joining. We have Ina Ivanina from Chicago. <laughs> thank you, yeah. thank you for joining. How are you guys? This is, a, how do you say, interesting season here in, the, in, in Arizona. It's already, I can, I can already feel the change in the season. It's dark. We used to meet in a little bit daylight time, but now I guess everyone is in dark times. But we can learn a lot as well during the night. So welcome. Um, tonight we have a very special program, I will say. And why so? because we are gonna be um, getting a, some dive into uh, the Bodhisattva Charya Avatara written by Master Shantideva. And the reason I find it very relevant this time is because uh, for some of you who may have attended the translation term that I was just talking about, Geshe Michael told us that he is going to write a commentary on the Bodhisattva Charya Vatara. It's gonna be, as far as I understood, uh, understand, um, his very first commentary in this very traditional way, that it's gonna be part of the lineage of the traditional canon of Buddhist scriptures. Uh, he even said that he's gonna do it in Tibetan and his very style is gonna try to catch some of the unique things that happen in the original language. In this case, it's Sanskrit. So because he also knows a lot of Sanskrit, he's gonna try to, to hold the, the ideas and some even jokes that he said are found there and, and translated first into Tibetan, comment on them. And then as well, we're gonna have the English and we hope many other languages. So I thought, it's a great opportunity to get a little bit in, um, inside of this text and start getting familiar because next term, we're gonna start going deeper on it as well. So we can all be a little bit like familiar on what's going on, what it is about, some of the main ideas that are contained in this wonderful, wonderful text. And as many of you may know as well, this is the text that was used uh, mainly for the, ACI courses 10, 11, and 12. So if some of you are very interested and then they wanna, uh, you wanna keep going into it, um, you know where to keep learning more about it. Okay, so let's start, let's start. And I would like first to ask Benevol Gielse, What's your personal experience with this subject or with this text? Anything that you remember, anything that you hold dear to, to your own practice about, about what can we learn from this beautiful text on the Bodhisattva Charya Bhattara, written by Master Shantideva, whatever you want to say, just as a general introduction for the audience. Well, thank you, Juan. <clears throat> so first of all, I find it really interesting that Seiji is going from the crown of knives to Master Shantideva, because for me, the two of them 
weave together and always have so beautifully because Crown of Knives is talking about our self-cherishing and Master Shanti Deva just follows on that of how we as bodhisattvas, those who want to become enlightened beings that can stand on every planet in the universe and serve every being, <clears throat> that the root of all of our suffering and all of our pain is our self-cherishing. So these two weave beautifully together and I'm sure it's no mistake that uh, Geshe-la is having Seiji go on to translate um, <clears throat> Bodhichara Avatar. And I don't know, I just find, I hold it very close to my heart. Um, because there's so much, so many things that Master Shanti Deva points to that we can work on in ourselves to become enlightened beings and the things we have to overcome and the seeds we have to plant. And it's an incredible long rim in itself, you know, showing us the path, so showing us the steps of how to become a bodhisattva, how to live like a bodhisattva, how to think of ourselves like a bodhisattva. And I refer back to it quite often. And it's especially, I mean, his last chapter, the dedication chapter, is just this beautiful, beautiful prayer to be able to serve every living being however they need it. And he goes through this list of, you know, if you're traveling or if you're pregnant or if you're this or if you're that. And it gives us such a good outline of all of the ways that we can serve beings and how to accomplish it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, I did find it very interesting and you did just mention it. Um, it seems that we could take, in a way we could take this text as Salam Rim, steps on the path from the very beginning to the very end of our highest accomplishments. Um, yeah, that are gonna serve everybody, right? And actually, one of the things that surprises me, or yeah, like in a you know happy way, let's say, is that actually in the text it does say that that this is a well. Let me give you some context. Um, the text we are studying actually is a commentary that Kiel Savje wrote about the Bodhisattva Charya Vatara. So he does say, Yelsev just says, well, he's starting the text. He does say, look, this is a, a text that can take us from the very beginning through the whole like achievement of the highest goals. And it's a very interesting perspective. Uh, as Venerable Gels, you, you just mentioned, it does begins with something that I found also very interesting. It's like, okay, we want to get there. We have to start getting ready. How do we get ready? And he did starts by, um, in a way we have to purify ourselves just as the very beginning to then move on and start like, you know, collecting beer to practicing the different techniques and eventually start, but it's like, I, I think in a way as if we are getting ready to go to a very, very nice party. First, we start with a shower <laughs> and brushing our teeth and cleaning ourselves and getting ready. We haven't yet uh, get to the party, but we are getting ready for it. I would like to ask you, Berta, what was your general take on the reading as well? Like maybe giving a, a little bit more context, but from your personal experience or like anything that you um, found interesting about the, the opening part of this beautiful text? Well, it all it is all just so beautiful. But even like the dedication at first, you know, when he bows to the to his teacher, you know, I just think that that is just so exquisite. And so, I don't know, it just kind of sets you in a mood of just, it, it's just a sensation of, you know, just go, oh, this is just, 
beyond words, you know, I think it is just absolutely gorgeous because it is in itself a manual how to become, you know, an enlightened being, how to behave, how to do all kinds of things. And, and it goes in so much detail on everything that every time I read it, every time I read a little part of it, it's like I discover something new or I'm just going, oh, that's right. And this, oh, that's, you know, so it's, I just think it's just magical the way, um, you know, that, like I said, I think the words are short to describe what he does, but when you start reading it, you get a lot more, I don't know, there's just a lot more in it than just what you're reading. I just think it's, you know, very, very beautiful. And it's something that we all try to, well, we're all trying, I talk about myself, I'm really trying to, to work on this, you know, and every time you go a little bit more in depth, which at first, I, the first time I read it, I thought it was beautiful, but I didn't read that depth in it. And every time I read it, then it seems like you go a little bit more, you know, more, more in depth, more, I don't know, just more in detail. It's just exquisite, I think. Yeah, thank you, Berta. Thank you. And it's actually interesting for me as well, because lately I, I have been studying the, the ACI course 10, and of course, I listen to the audios and then, well, now I'm doing my homeworks and everything. Very, very nice. I really recommend it. I, um, I have been stubborn in the past and <laughs> having difficult time doing the homeworks. But now that I'm doing them, I see they are very, very useful for learning. But not only that, uh, then I start giving me the chance to also go and do the readings. And as you say, Berta, there are things that come in the reading that can really take us like to another level. So I really recommend uh, people, if you're interested, give it a try, do the reading, it's amazing. It's amazing, maybe it's just a different form of learning. Some people learn better by listening, some people by reading, you know, like many different kinds of, I don't know, intelligence or I don't know how to call it, but. But it's nice. It's nice, and and we can go very in depth on it. And we are gonna do it in a in a little more minutes. We're gonna start reading some of it, uh, and then we can talk about this that you just mentioned, Berta, about how even one paragraph contains so many ideas. Like we could probably we could spend like a whole session in just one paragraph. Um, what do you think, Ina? How was your general? I don't know, feeling, take on this reading, if it brought memories to you or personal experiences that you have remembered, questions maybe that whatever, uh, how did this reading touch you particularly this time? Uh, hi everybody, I'm very happy to be here. Um, uh, I was thinking uh, that uh, for some reason I heard about Master Shantideva before I was really doing ACI courses and uh, I, uh, I I don't know what was so magical because definitely when I did the uh, ACI 10, 11 and 12, I was thinking, oh my God, I didn't understood even <laughs> probably one word correctly there <laughs> when I was reading for the first time. Uh, but I, uh, it was the first book I took with me when I moved to France in 2015. Uh, so it was, uh, in a way, very important. Um, there were very particular advices, uh, like uh, I didn't know what to do with the anger when it really arises. And uh, then, like, uh, you know, now uh, uh, we have uh, the war and uh, frankly my biggest concern as of today is uh, that it is very difficult to fight your anger when you know that there is a war ongoing and uh, people are dying every day and uh, this is your country and uh, meaning, uh, moreover it is coming out of your seeds right <clears throat> So, and uh, uh, this book, I remember, gave me the very first uh, advice, like uh, I, I was uh, reading, like there are, there are many advices, like many, many good suggestions, what to do, with, what to do with your anger. And uh, obviously the best ones are about uh, emptiness, uh, like think where it comes from, your, your enemy, right? But I remember, okay, I was like, uh, no, 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 cannot use it, cannot use it, <laughs> like too late, too late, too late, okay. Uh, 
uh, just uh, just be. I, I don't rem- I don't know how it is in English. Uh, like uh, I remember in Russian, zamri kak brevno. Like uh, be uh, um, un- pump. Pump, like, yeah. pump on a log. Yeah. Right. Uh, correct. <laughs> I was thinking. Oh, that's something I can really do. <laughs> <laughs> it was very practical so that was uh, what i was thinking about uh and uh like i don't know how you guys probably it, it's not uh this uh a war um that does not touch you that much obviously meaning i'm also in chicago right but uh i have constant reminders my uh friends uh like uh colleagues uh uh, ex-husband, uh, relatives uh, are in Ukraine, and uh, I just brought my parents uh, that are refugees uh, in Chicago. So, and um, I'm constantly thinking, okay, how I can decrease my anger even more? How I can, uh, what I can do? What else? Is there anything else I can really do? You know, like, is it still coming from me? I know these seeds are very, like, uh, how to say, hard to change. But there should be something. So that Master Shantideva, I think, really gives this hope that one day it can be possible to really get rid of all the negative emotions among everything else. Thank you, Ina. Thank you for thank you for sharing. And it, it well, I mean, yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine, and she was sharing with me some personal concern, you know, like basically I will say that it's like she was saying that she see conflict around her and sometimes she doesn't know what's the best take she could take, right? Like like she doesn't know if if like sometimes just being maybe patient and listen to a person, uh, but maybe the person is complaining and, and like maybe making like negative seeds so, so she doesn't know if she should correct them or just be paid like what take to how how to take it let's say so then because i have been listening to these classes lately this idea came it's interesting something that you mentioned like the chapter on 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 how to be patient i think it's wonderful and there are like actually two classes on i think it's the course 11 two classes dedicated to many, many different techniques for anger. But one of them that maybe it was interesting, well, all of them, but this one say something like, basically the scripture says like, as far as we haven't, have not seen perceived emptiness directly, we haven't perceived emptiness directly. We are considered like children, like, um, there is a Tibetan word I forgot the, for the children. Was the, the two-year-old that gets you Michael often says? Kiba. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Shiva. Um, so then Master Shantideva says, like, you know, like these crazy kids are like all wild doing all sorts of things. Uh, if they hurt, even by the way that they act, if, if, if they hurt themselves how can you not expect them hurting other people if they are not even able to take care of themselves because of ignorance, because all the time we are doing wrong things in the sense of not understanding how to get things or how um, get rid of bad things that we don't want. We do all kind of wrong things and we hurt ourselves. And then he's saying like, instead of getting upset with these children, we are supposed to try to develop compassion because it's like if they are i mean and i apologize because it's a bad word but like something like if they are so stupid that they hurt themselves all the time it's very understandable that they hurt other people at the same time but out of like this ignorance so in a way like i think i i feel maybe this sadness that it's very, very bad situation that we are in, in a world like, it's like kind of our human nature, like we want something and then we get attached to it and we're going to do whatever, like, and I think in a way, wars at the end of the day happen because of that, because we want something ignorantly or we dislike something ignorantly and then we start like doing crazy stuff just to, to whatever but all based on misunderstanding. 
So anyways, I think it's just beautiful, beautiful uh, content that, that gives us so many perspectives, um, content in this book. I will propose to give it some reading and then from there we can start just sharing a little bit more about it. Uh, I'm gonna share with you the screen. And it's a it's a somehow like a long reading. So I propose starting from half after the postration. Then if we have time, we can go to the postration. But I really would like to address like um, a few ideas that that are already developing the text. I'm gonna share the screen. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. No. Uh huh. Okay, does any of you would like to start reading? Anyone? Sure, I can do it. From, from okay. where? From the second? Here. Yeah. Okay. The second section, the actual explanation of this book is in two parts. First will be a presentation of the overall structure of the book and then an explanation of each individual part. Do you want me to go on? Mm -hmm. Maybe three or four paragraphs. This book presents in their, in their entirety, each one of the steps of the path to enlightenment. It begins by telling you the way to practice the contemplations for people of lesser and medium capacity, and as adjunct, adjunct to practicing the contemplations for people of great capacity. Then it goes on to teach you how to develop the wish to achieve supreme enlightenment, and how after you have developed the wish, you should train yourself in the perfection of giving along with the other five perfections. The first chapter explains how in the beginning, you must increase your joyful energy to its very highest and thoroughly contemplating the benefits which come from developing the wish to achieve supreme enlightenment. This chapter also touches upon the way you should practice as an adjunct, the contemplations for people of lesser and medium capacity. And one more. Can you, okay. Yeah. You must go about developing the wish to achieve supreme enlightenment and wish, and wish whose very root is love and compassion in the same way that you would go about preparing to welcome a king who ruled the entire world by cleaning your house and so on. You will be able to acquire this wish by purifying all of the factors which obstruct spiritual realizations and gathering together the power of good deeds which promote them. These two subjects are covered respectively in the second and third chapters. Thank you, Berta. I would like also to invite people, if you want to participate in the chat or, you know, maybe ask questions or whatever, feel free to write in the chat and um, we can um, read you there. So here I find, well, a few interesting ideas. Juan? Yes. Somebody's asking about Spanish translation. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. In the questions? Yeah. In the Q&A? No hay interpretación en español. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Mm, oh, okay, yeah, I would like to... Take this paragraph with, um, no, where is it? It's something that says that we have to, yeah, here it is. I lost it, but it is about, first we have to want it. First we have to want to gain the wish. First we have to want to be, to become enlightened. And, yeah, here it is, to increase our joyful energy to do it. So I would like to ask you, all of you panelists, um, how do you do this? How do you motivate yourself every day or, or often? I don't know how often, but, but to keep motivated to practice. Sometimes to me, it happens that sometimes difficult times come. Sometimes I feel a little like sad or depressed that I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere, like I'm trying my best or 
things like that, but I'm not seeing the results that I would like to see. Um, what do you do in order to, to awaken this energy that maybe makes you try and keep going and, and uh, maybe look inside yourself and find things, subtle things maybe that, that you should work in what could you share with us about how to increase your joyful energy, let's say to the highest, in order to, to say, okay, I'm going to do it today. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try. Like, what's your um, personal experience on this? Um. Well, for me, one of the things I do is first thing in the morning, even before I'm really quite awake, is I set my motivation for the day by basically doing the four infinite thoughts. And that helps me to, you know, at least set a tone for the day. I may forget it later, but at least at one time during the day. You know, I have set my intention. And then when I wake up, when I really wake up, it's I rejoice and all and have so much gratitude for even the fact that I'm awake and have another chance to perfect myself that day. And again, setting that motivation. And if I set that motivation in the morning, I think it really helps me throughout the day to continue that joyful effort and wishing, you know, that all beings would be, have happiness in all its causes and all beings be free of suffering in its causes, right? And the fact that I'm going to do it. So will that mean something, Venerable Yelse, as like every morning you dedicate some time uh, let's say, I don't know if, if this is exactly like a meditation or something you may do, but, but it's like you really save a part of your day, especially at the very morning, to kind of touch base, set your kind of, I don't know how to say, like direction, and from there begin to move during the day. Is something like that with your... Yeah, it's... All, and I don't do it formally I'm, you know it's not like I sit and meditate it's like I'm still slightly in that dream state so it's it's both conscious and unconscious which I think really helps it to um, be absorbed into my mind stream because it's it's in neither world but it's just and it's something I've done for years and so it as I begin to wake up, I immediately go into that, into that wish. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, any of you, uh, um, Berta, Ina, would like to share some ideas? How to increase this energy or joyful? Well, yeah. Yeah, I want to hear what others have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I can tell you that in the mornings too, I uh, basically what I do is what am I going to be doing today? And uh, since um, what the most, the most significant part of my day I spent translating some of the ACI courses, which is, I am so fortunate. And so, I mean, it's just the best thing of really, I could tell you right now, this is the best thing in my life. But when I wake up in the morning, I go, okay, so I'm going to translate as much as possible. And uh, with my translations, a lot more people is going, you know, is going, are going to be able to read this absolutely beautiful material and be able to have the opportunity and have the chance to, you know, maybe stop seeing things as self-existent, you know, or have a better life and plants, you know, plant seeds. And at the same time, I feel like I am planting seeds and I'm very conscious of, uh, especially, you know, that's one of them. And the other one is, you know, I take care of my parents and, I always think too, today I'm going to do my best to give the best care of my parents, which are very powerful karmic object. And with that, I'm hoping that I'm helping as many beings as possible, but that's pretty much what I, you know, 
what I do, and every time I'm having a hard time or something difficult happens because it does happen, you know, I try to go back to this, you know, it's like, okay, I know this is a lesson, this is a teaching, this is something I've done, this is coming from me, you know, just, you know, get back to it. I just, I just want to have it all the time instead of just that, some, you know, sometimes that you, that just kind of flashes by, I wish I would just have it all the time present in my life, you know, just understanding that things are coming from me 24-7. <laughs> Thank you, Berta. For you, Inna? Uh, I will be a good panelist representative. I will speak slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I mean, I will speak slowly. Uh, I was uh, thinking, like uh, recently I was thinking uh, in our community, there are people that uh, I would love to be like them. They look constantly happy and um, like uh, you would think that uh, they have no troubles no problems uh, and uh, uh, like uh, I'm probably <laughs> different example because <laughs> sometimes I think I have all the troubles and um, mm, I have a lot of experience how to feel miserable and uh, uh, when you do feel miserable, then there are several steps uh, sometimes that it takes uh, uh, to, uh, to the uh, stage when you can really have some joyful uh, thought, thought, you know, or any joyful effort. And I was thinking that um, it took me many years to be honest uh, with myself about it like uh, I had the habit to lie to myself to uh, not to uh, to hide from myself that I have troubles like really deep troubles uh, so it took me probably 10 years to learn to be honest to, to myself then once I'm honest okay I see I'm not in a good mood uh, and definitely something goes wrong. I, I don't know what, but something goes wrong. And uh, um, it doesn't ha help uh, instantly uh, understanding that it, it is coming from my seeds. Uh, so, and usually, I don't know, maybe, I, I, think, uh, I think many people, they uh, have the same issue. I feel... I don't want really to like I don't have enough uh, energy to leave the state I mean so uh, I have uh, the whole list of tricks <laughs> how to trick me to go out of uh, serious uh, like difficulty um, emotional difficulty and uh, the uh, the first one that I use is to go back to the body I uh, um, I was doing for 10 years uh, after my medical training, psychotherapy training, and, and I figured that it helps uh, tremendously, like uh, all the physical, you know, things. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes yoga is too much already. Uh, first, like um, uh, we have seen many refugees, they cannot do any yoga. They are just, uh, you know, like an... Uh, uh, embryon postures like uh, uh, very difficult to do uh, to help uh, people because uh, of that so I uh, usually uh, if I have a, an opportunity I ask for a Thai massage you know because it goes really it is really intense it wakes uh, my body uh, or if I have no possibility, then I, I have a tricky, tricky yoga, trick yoga. Uh, <laughs> so I'm cheating. Uh, I go to a good acu acupuncturist, you know, and with the influence on the channels, like external, uh, external, uh, I can go faster to yoga, for example, if I was not able to do yoga because of different issues. So these are my tricks, you know, I really need to go back to my body. If everything goes really bad, then just, uh, you know, grounding, just walking, you know, like a lot helps uh, tremendously. 
And um, if somebody can do a massage, this is very good. Then once I'm in better contact with my body, it is easier for me to feel happier. So that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Sorry if this is not about really a Master Shantideva. <laughs> No, thank you. I think I think it's great because for me it opens up the perspective on how all teachings are connect connected. Because um, you know what we study in, in Yoga Studies Institute lately as well is like we are supposed to use outer and inner methods, and I mean if the outer methods help you. If you have the seeds and the outer methods help you, it's great. We are supposed to use them. And then if going for a massage or getting grounded helps you to feel at peace, and then that peace gives you a better perspective to take action and stuff, I think it's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing because sometimes there's people who, who may need that exactly. So I think it's very valuable. Thank you. Um, so then let's let's proceed a little bit more with the reading. I'll share the screen again and will you read this time? Uh, you just read right, Berta? Right. Will you read this time, Ina? Yeah, sure. Um, here. Uh, yeah. This is the king. Yeah. And here. Mm -hmm. The first chapter. The first chapter teaches you why you must be careful once you have developed the wish. So that uh, the good energy you have amassed uh, from training yourself in the activities of a bodhisattva does not uh, uh, degenerate. The chapters which follow teach you how to put the six perfections into practice. With regards to this, the fifth chapter is devoted to an extensive presentation on how to train yourself to live an ethical life uh, through maintaining your mindfulness and awareness. And the next four chapters are successfully, uh, successively devoted uh, to how to train yourself in not getting angry, uh, joyfully doing good deeds, meditative, concentration and wisdom. The 10th chapter explains uh, in detail how you can learn what attitude which, uh, that attitude which wants to give away to others, your own body, all your possessions, along with every good thing you've ever done. And it teaches you how to sweeten your acts of giving through dedication. Although the 10th chapter treats uh, with great thoroughness how it is uh, that uh, you should train yourself in the perfection of giving. This subject is also taught on the occasions such as in the chapter on how to develop the wish for enlightenment. The subject of what is, uh, uh, the subject of what it is to be a Buddha which is the final result, is treated in the ninth chapter. Mm -hmm. And maybe let's just go very quickly through the list of the 10 chapters. Okay. And then we talk about it. The name, names of the 10 chapters of the Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life are as follows. Benefits of the wish for enlightenment, purifying bad deeds, acquiring uh, the wish for enlightenment, using carefulness, guarding awareness, not getting angry, uh, joyous effort, meditative concentration, wisdom, and dedication. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here we can see... Uh, the 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 structure of the whole text and i find it very interesting that first as geshe michael many times does in the lab room and he explains why first we have to understand the benefits in the first place why do we want to get something right and then once we decide that we want it we start moving forward to 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 get it right um 
what will be your take on your personal understanding, let's put it that way, your personal understanding on, on what are the benefits on developing this wish for enlightenment? Because we have heard many times that, let's say, we could see emptiness directly by focusing on understanding um, selflessness and dependent origination and the four uh, Arya truths. We could by studying this and meditating. Um, but in your personal experience and understanding, why? If somebody asks you, like, why, why should I try to, to achieve this, this wish? What, what is special about it? Mm, what would you say to them? Or what do you say to yourself if that's the case of what could be different in our lives if we are totally sold on the idea that I want to get it? I, I'm going to work to get this wish for enlightenment. If you, any of you can. Can, if you want to share something. I think for me, the, to hear, you know, I studied a lot of this, but at some point, Geshe Michael started talking about being able to stand in one place and going out to every planet in every universe to bring people out of suffering. And that to me was like so exciting. It's like, yes, I want to do that. I want to be that kind of being. And that's the wish. That's the wish. May I be that kind of being. And the benefits are of it, at least as we're promised, are that we can serve every being in every universe and bring everybody to a place of peace and harmony and their full potential to a place of enlightenment. And to me, that's just, it's so attractive. Um, and that's the benefit of the wish for enlightenment, you know, in a very broad scope, not the specifics. And that was just like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to be able to end the wars in the world. I want to be able to end famine. I want to be able to end violence. I want to be able, you know, just like Master Shanti Davis says in his dedication chapter, I want women to be able to give birth without pain. I don't want anybody to be hungry anymore, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we could go on for a long time. And like, what else really is of more value, at least to me, than doing that? Thank you. Thank and there's you. so many ways to do it. You know, you can become a billionaire and do it. You don't have to be a poor Dharma student. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many ways to do that and um and it depends it just all depends on one's motivation and one's intention thank you thank you for sharing um and what about you berta if somebody comes and say like hey berta i hear you have been studying this buddhist thing and the Mahayana, I don't know what, but what is what is what is what is it better or what is it special than to just you know meditate and um, maybe just um, <laughs> I don't even know like just focusing on the on the wisdom side of things. What would you say? Um, it's maybe the I will even say the function of getting into the bodhicitta or bodhisattva practice? Well, just like Venerable Gyoza said, that's like the ultimate, you know, like that is like the biggest, the biggest goal, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, but in order to, like what I tell, for instance, my kids, you know, um, I said, what I am learning 
in, in ways of so simple as far as an ethical way of life, you know, something that it can be every time, uh, you know, you can go even finer and finer and finer in all the perfections, you know, in the perfect of giving. I love the way Gisha Michael calls it now sharing, which I think it's, it's so, you know, so much prettier or more profound, but in just touching every one of the perfections in a more, uh, I guess, practical way. And then also telling people, look, you know, you, you really learn how to meditate and you gradually will see the results of all your mental afflictions. If I was to use that metaphorically, is like decreasing the volume, you know, they start kind of, you know, start going down. And that is something that, that I have seen in myself. And that is something that it's, it's so desirable for everybody, you know, because that's what we want. We want ultimately to get rid of them so we, so we can help everyone uh, achieve the same thing. And we can um, also, you know, by doing this, obviously our uh, environment is also going to change. And I think that's what I, that, that's what I focus on. You know, when I tell someone, it's like, look, you will start seeing results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i what i maybe i understand from what you're saying is like the body the bodhisattva track let's say it or the, the bodhisattva bodhicitta sections or studies they come with a whole set of tools and training it's like also they are giving you a lot of techniques that you can start using in your daily life to achieve all these beautiful things and goals and stuff, it almost strikes me as if developing this wish is like something inside your heart that motivates you and gives you energy. Like, I don't know if you could um, share this with me, but sometimes let's say I'm lazy to do something, but somebody really needs my help. Like, you know, like somebody reads my, needs my help and, and that like, um, maybe I will say like liking the person or the love that I may have for my mom or my dad, let's say, it gives me the energy like, okay, okay, okay. I was about to just rest and watch TV, but because you need me, I find a special out of this like love that I want you to, to be happy and I want you to accomplish that need that you're having. I create this, okay, all right, let's do it. And then all of a sudden when you are doing it, you feel amazing. You are not tired anymore. You're having like, you feel good that you are doing something good for others. Uh, is this something that, that some of you have experienced or do you, how do you maybe now, Ina, how do you see the benefits in your daily life of, of trying to develop this wish like i want to really become capable and able to help other people to, for everybody of course including yourself as well because you're part of the everybody but how how will you describe to someone from your personal experience that the benefits of training <laughs> ourselves in this wish uh, you know uh because I'm a medical doctor, you know, and I'm working for pharmaceutical industry, I'm surrounded by people that uh, are not really in, uh, you know, high philosophy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they probably will not buy that this is like really great and um, etc. So um, I have a tendency to uh, really um, think about logic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I wouldn't uh, have the seats, uh, because uh, I really like to help people genu uh, genuinely. Uh, and uh, if somebody does not like to help people, right, uh, how to explain why this is so cool? Uh, and I think uh, it is something that uh, the Dalai Lama calls uh, uh, cell, uh, uh, egoistic, uh, selfish uh, uh, um, how he calls it um, it's not the en enlightened self-interest enlightened self-interest yes. right right mm -hmm. so because uh, just out of logic if this is how this world works does work uh, that my actions uh, create my 
what I perceive as reality, right? That reality is not changed because I'm physically moving stuff, right? But uh, everything is the instant projection every every millisecond. Then <clears throat> the only thing I can do that will be really uh, substantial is to plant good seeds. And the best seeds is when you will do something which is the best for a uh, limitless number of people, right? Uh, right? Uh, I mean, we consider insects and uh, others also as people, right? Living beings. So this is just the logic. Uh, you are doing the, the, the greatest thing to infinite number. That's how you come to magical results. <laughs> so... Uh, this is a, an ultimate success, as Gish Michael calls it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it because, again, uh, it comes so evident to me that everything is uh, connected and related in, in the practice. It's almost, almost, I will say, it's impossible to talk about bodhicitta without talking about wisdom. And in a way, very pro possible it's also the other case around uh, but i will have to examine that more closely but even the fact that the the nick one of the nicknames for the direct perception of emptiness is ultimate bodhicitta and they say that's when we by doing that is when we really become capable are able to to now really really start helping everybody mm -hmm. um, i felt you berta wanted to say something uh, do you want to add something Yeah, I wanted to say that it's, uh, you know, it's long, it's not almost, it is like the manual. If you mm -hmm. follow the manual and the instructions perfectly, you know, that you will get it. And that, I think that is what it's amazing. It's just, you know, we have a hard time following it exactly all the time, every single moment, but it's all right there. You know, all the wisdom, everything is just right there. Mm -hmm yeah 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 even in the in the it's 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 interesting to me this like okay you want to develop bodhicitta among many other practices you're going to do the six perfections and one of the perfections is the perfection of wisdom but not only that if you want to practice any other of the perfections in order for them to be called to be able to call to be how do you say to be able to be called perfections i don't know sorry uh they need to be covered with emptiness or with understanding, I mean, wisdom. So it seems to be, as you were talking about it, you know, like, like going through the, I guess you Michael sometimes also say it, going through the logic takes us through our hearts. It's like a door to, to soften our hearts. Understanding can be also a, a method to to soften and make us more loving and, and compassionate. Um, would you like to add something, Benavol Gilsey? No? Ah, okay. I thought you wanted to. No, I was just gonna say when you mentioned, you know, wisdom and ultimate bodhicitta, they're synonyms, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're synonyms meaning that they're the they point to the same thing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a code word for for emptiness. Mm -hmm. right? That's, and I think it's really sweet to to really contemplate on that. And why is that so? And to think about that. Mm -hmm. I I think I want to add something uh, that uh, I, I just was thinking that. Uh, mm, they they uh, uh, speak a lot about love in different religions was uh, for me frankly before i uh, started to study aci was completely useless i could not understand because they are high emotions you know sometimes are too high for uh, people uh, with the intellectual background or you know um, how to say uh, that are more intellectual, for example. And uh, 
uh, I remember I was thinking, okay, he says I'm in Geschmackel. You should do four steps because uh, I came for the first time uh, uh, to hear this teaching. It was uh, DCI4 in Kiev uh, relationship. You know, uh, it was in the center of the city, very beautiful. And uh, I heard, okay, four steps. I should do four steps. I was thinking, okay, I should help another person. And I remember how artificial it was in the beginning, like uh, find, you know, then uh, you know this uh, crisis of a bodhisattva that you go through in four steps when you think oh he's helping me more than I help him I cannot plant my seeds in a good way <laughs> so and uh, uh, but then you think wow it is so cool to help people like you're getting uh, uh, you're getting used to it uh, and uh, it feels pleasant and you start to really enjoy it so it's a very tricky path, guys. <laughs> you just start and then you cannot <laughs> really leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One friend of mine, he told me lately, I don't even remember what we, we were talking about, but he told me, he say, well, love and wisdom are very connected, intertwined, I think he say. And I think it's something that you're saying, like um, if we think about like love and wisdom run through our central channels, it will make total sense that when you start helping others, somehow your heart like, or your central channel starts like opening a little bit because you are do helping them, seeing them feel better or happier or whatever. And then just by, by this um, expansion on the channel, you start getting more energy as well. So, so it's, it's interesting, really helping others, even from a yoga perspective point of view, uh, will make sense why it makes you happier as well and, and probably healthier and wiser and every good thing that happens in the central channel. So yeah, it's great, it's great does make sense if if any of you would like to we are almost over with the session but if any of you would like to maybe say some last share some last ideas or if there is like one question in the chat or something we could take it um but or or if you would like to maybe just give a general um, advice or a practice how can we start uh, growing this wish um called bodhicitta like what will be a very very first step very concise like something people will take to their daily lives in a very practical way if you have any ideas super welcome yeah well maybe like you were saying you know um with somebody it's just you could just ask how do you feel when you do something good for someone mm -hmm. you know and obviously everybody is going to answer oh it feels great it's like, well, you know, let's just keep on doing it then, you know, I mean, because it does, it does feel very well when you, when you help someone, you know, it, it feels good. So maybe just keep doing that. And then that, that will lead you to, it's just like a chain, you know, that leads you to, you know, sharing and then it leads you to an ethical life and it leads you to joyful effort and it just goes on to all, to all the perfections. I like it, Berta. It's almost something like if you feel sad or depressed or whatever, like what we were talking at the beginning, go and help someone and then we'll talk. <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And also this, I usually tell them it's just like in nature, you know, you, uh -huh. plant, you know, you get some little seeds and you plant tomatoes and you'll get tomatoes. You're not going to get roses. You're going mm -hmm. to get tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So everything is just like that. So mm -hmm. that's it. In um, fact, the best way to get out of depression mm -hmm. is to go and serve somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because it gets you out of thinking about yourself all the time. Mm -hmm. You're serving another. And I say that from my own experience. Mm -hmm. It's not just some philosophy. Mm -hmm. I've put it to, to practice and found that it definitely helps. I'm just going to say, you know, I think the very beginning is to recognize that you're you are suffering yourself and that nobody else is any different. 
And that's the first step. And that you want to get out. So if they're not any different, maybe they don't want to suffer. And then, you know, you can do the steps from there. I think they just come naturally. But we first have to recognize that, you know, what we're doing isn't working. And it's probably not working for anybody else. Just look at the state of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Reality check. Ina, I'm sorry I cut you off. Uh, no, I think uh, what you said is so beautiful. Maybe uh, I don't know if I want to add anything. <laughs> uh, uh, my idea was that uh, uh, we talk a lot about uh, all living beings and then uh, it's good to start uh, to uh, the living beings that are close to us. Maybe uh, try to pretend being a bodhisattva for a while and see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Secretly. <laughs> That's the best way, secretly. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, regards that I remember, uh, um, a friend of mine told me that her dad told her once, uh, yeah, yeah, you're always talking about saving the world, but you cannot save your own room. <laughs> so I like that starting with, with our more, most direct uh, people that we spend time with, like just paying attention. How do you feel today? Do you have what you need? Okay, good. And yeah, it, it's very nice to open our awareness as well to the ones that are around ourselves. So, so thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you very much. Um, I hope we can keep going into these topics and over the pass of time, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, but in general, I would say like we can learn more, but when I say we, I don't know who you are. So, me. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Thank you for being here. We'll meet again next week. Um, in the chat, Arina, wrote the, the link if you want to support this project remember it's not really only the reading club it really is like the whole uh, project of translating the ancient text that Geshe Michael and the Mixed Notes are making accessible for us so it's it will be a very very well very much appreciated if you whatever you can support it's super super welcome Thank you. Hope you keep having a good night or good morning or whatever you are. And yeah, let's let's see if we can take something from this session and, and put it into practice and see what happens. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you so much for running it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you My for pleasure. inviting this fun. amazing group of women here. Yeah, thank you for coming. Such an honor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll see some other time. <laughs> thank you, translators. And sorry we spoke too fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, translators. That's true. Thank you very much. Okay, have a good next whatever it is. <laughs> Day, night, afternoon, evening. See you. Bye-bye.